Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner. And yes, the blonde is back. I actually have a bachelorette party I'm going to this evening. So I was like, okay, I gotta like zhuzh it up. Because I have a dress I wanna wear, and the dress looks like it looks good with blonde. It looks a little, it looks like Chef's Kiss with blonde. My natural hair, it will look okay, but that blonde, this look kicks up a notch and I haven't worn the dress yet. So it's the debut of a dress. So um, yeah, it's, it's in the city. Um, I've never been to, a I haven't really been to a bachelorette party. I don't think ever. So I'm like really, really, really excited and hyped for it. Um, it's part of my, like the group I am part of, the running group I'm part of. I'm sorry, I did last night, like kind of, last night slash early this morning, so. I might need to cut this up a little bit to make it even because I know this side's like, I don't know. Because I think on this side, I want to do what I've been doing. And then this side, I kind of went that way. So I don't know. I kind of, <laughs> I freaked at the end. Like, um, because, you know, I put it in and then once I do that, then I cut it. So I just didn't really, it's not cut even. Anyway, but that's not why you're here. Um. This is the Get Fit With Me series presents accountability slash um, Olympic update slash content update. So this week, okay, you might, elf in the room, I'm gonna post this probably on Sunday versus Monday, number one. Number two, you probably were expecting to see the Real Housewives of Orange County um, either, well, yesterday, well, um, yesterday or today. I didn't know that it was still going to come on because the Olympics. And I've been watching the Olympics non-stop. Like, look, I even have a little bit of bags underneath my eyes. I've not been sleeping well at all this week because I've just been so engrossed, engrossed in the Olympics. But I'm also still doing my own training. And I also finally did get um, things looked at for myself. So the summer's been summering and especially because it's olympic year it's been summering tenfold fold um fold 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 um so yeah um the real housewives of orange county is gonna be up late this week obviously and then it's gonna also be up late next week because next week, I'm going to be all in when it comes to the Olympics, when it comes to track and field. Because for those who are, for those who don't know, track and field, that's my number one sport I love to watch. Even last Sunday, I did my triathlon. And after I did that, then I went to a local, I went to like a bar with some of my friends and we watched the um, women's soccer team. Why well, I tell you the Olympic season's been Olympicking and I just been paying attention watching that? That's what it's been. So let's go over that real quick and then I'll go over some of the other things that are going on. So the women's soccer team, they're kicking butt, been watching them. Um, Trendy Rodman, like boop, 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 getting that. Um, I do love that she's carving her own lane. Because for those who don't know, I mean, it's kind of obvious if you're American and you follow sports, but... Trini Robin um, is Dennis Robin's daughter, and they're strange. They're not really, you know, that's the whole thing. But I don't know if they still are strange. They were. But the whole point is clearly <laughs> athleticism is hereditary, and she is killing it in women's football, um, as the rest of the world call it. We call it soccer here in the United States, but just to avoid confusion, because we also have American football. Um, but yeah, she's killing it. She's killing it. So if you hear me say soccer or football, interchangeable, you know, I'm talking about the same thing. Um, but yeah, so I've been watching that. That's actually on right now and I'm missing it as I'm recording it. And I'm kind of like, Ugh. um, cause they're going against Japan right now. And I want to watch that. But yeah, um, uh, besides that, I've been watching the swims. Um, the swims have been it hasn't been as interesting as it used to be, I'll be honest, because I'm a Michael Phelps girl. I like love Michael Phelps, mainly because he's like from Baltimore and I don't know, I find him awkwardly attractive. <laughs> so I'm kind of just like, kind of the magic of the swim 
isn't there for me as much because I don't have the I can't as much cheer for. I'm pretty sure other people might feel that way too that are US watchers. Um, but I still watch. I did still watch. Um, the what I will say is the US team, at least the men's team, outside of um Caleb, um, and there's another K K Caleb Dressel and um I can't get the name. Ryan something. I forgot his name. There's only two people that are on the U.S. men's team that I really recognize. Everyone else are like, it's like the young guns. So I don't know who any of these other people are. And I didn't watch the swims Olympic trial. I don't really keep up with swimming outside the Olympic years. I know they're similar to probably like track and field and some of the other sports that are Olympic sports like your main Olympic sports, they have world championships every year and all that other stuff. But I feel like I kept up with the pre-pandemic a little bit more, but I don't, I'm not even sure if the, if they even, in, when they were in Tokyo, did they even do the Olympics for swimming? And if they did, it was probably super awkward. So I don't know. I'm not even sure. But um, besides watching that, Y'all know I've been watching the women's um, gymnastics. Simone Biles, go, go, go. <laughs> I mean, that's all I'm gonna say. She's the go. Uh, I um, have been watching most of the stuff. By the way, I've been watching most of the stuff like on replay, and I've just been avoiding spoilers, um, just because I would never get any sleep. <laughs> Uh, there, there's a huge, there's a time difference when it comes to the Paris games, um, cause it's in Paris and I have a whole entire real job that is a day job. And I also am doing my own training on my own side and trying to stay healthy while I'm doing my training. Um, so I have not been able to watch it the way I want to watch it. Um, and you know, work's been, work's been pretty good. It hasn't been busy, but it's getting there. So I'm trying to get myself set up so that when we are busy, I won't be freaked out. So that's the other thing. So Simone Biles, um, Jordan Childs, the U.S. Um, gymnastics team, killing it, rhythmic gymnastics. I should say that because I think that there's two different forms of gymnastics for those who don't know. Um, and I think most people, when they're talking about gymnastics, they're talking about the rhythm, the rhythmic gymnastics. So, um, I, I feel like I just need to clarify because I probably will watch the other gymnastics that comes up, um, in a couple weeks or it'll be probably more all next week and then the weekend. I'll watch that too. So Yeah. That's been good too. Simone Biles is killing it. Jordan Childs, I love her energy. My Aries twin. She literally is my Aries twin. We have the same birthday. So I'm like, Aries twin. <laughs> Getting the girls hyped. Let them know what time it is. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, so besides that, what else have I been watching? Um, did not get a chance to watch the women's or men's volleyball. Did watch women's rugby. I was really happy that we got bronze. Um, normally I would be happy for like third place, but it's significant because U.S. women's rugby hasn't gotten anything in a hundred years. So being on the podium, you're at least still in the club, okay? <laughs> At least you're not outside the club. You're still in the club. So I'm pretty happy. I, I was pretty excited for that. I watched that um, bronze medalist championship game. Um, the, the tail end of it. Um, and hopefully this does help the rugby sport. Um, here in Chicago, um, there are some pretty decent rugby teams. I'm sure they're like that throughout the United States. But like, I actually have a rugby team that plays like not far away from where I live, and sometimes I just so sometimes I do check that out. Um, also, football slash soccer, also because 
I have like a, I have a field that's literally down the street from where I live. So I like literally, while I'm doing my run or if I'm doing my cycling or if I'm walking, I sometimes just stop and watch to see what's going on. So yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, so what else have I been watching? I watched the triathlon for the men's. Uh, I did not watch the women's triathlon. I watched the highlights. Um, whoop, reverse it. Reverse, reverse, actually, I, I said that, but the opposite. I watched the women's triathlon, but just watched the men's highlights. Um, for those who did that triathlon, and I, because I actually just got done doing a triathlon last weekend, for one, and for two, it could never be me. <laughs> and the reason why I said that is, Y'all already know, for those who follow me and have known that I do triathlons every year, I am a wimp. I do a triathlon that has a pool, number one. I still am not strong enough of a swimmer to do open water swim. And for two, my graduation, once I do do open water swim, will be Lake Michigan. Um, that's not the cleanest water either, but I do know it's cleaner than that water in Paris. So... I know they had a whole thing to clean it up, but the fact that even the week of the Olympics, they actually had to like postpone the men's triathlon because of the water contamination levels. That's all I needed to hear. And I'll be like, no ma'am, nope, 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 nope. I would, I would be going the other way. I'm like, ain't no way. I will just enjoy the rest of my Paris trip. And yeah. Because what gets me about it is they're doing, they have surfing, right? And I know Tahiti is known for like surfing waters versus swimming waters. Um, but I still would think there still would have been a way to do the triathlon there in cleaner water versus that. I get they wanted them to run and do the biking through Paris. Because that part, the dual Athlon part would have been cool, but it, or at least drop it down to a dual Athlon, which I know they don't have that, but I don't know. It's just, I would not want to swim in that kind of water. That's gross. I'm sorry. And for those who watch overseas who will be watching from like France, I'm not trying to insult y'all, but just for me, because I'm someone who doesn't really swim in open water like that in general, I would not, that, that's actually what scares me actually from swimming in open water is water contamination. Okay. So you're literally, that's my fear. That's my problem right there is water contamination. Other than the fact that I'm not a strong swimmer. It's a combination of two things. Cause even I've been putting off getting adult swimming lessons so I can start doing open water swims and start doing the Chicago triathlon here. I've been putting it off because I don't really, as much as I want to be able to say I've done a, uh, like a kind of like an Olympic distance triathlon, I don't want to do it because I don't want to go, I don't want to swim in open water. <laughs> Especially the water is gross. I've actually done some triathlons that are kind of open water, but the water wasn't, it was a smaller lake. I could see what's underneath the water. Like, that kind of thing. It's just the idea of, it's not, it's not even really the animals. If there's animals there, to me, that's a good sign. It means like, okay, it's, it's, it's deep, like, it's, <laughs> it's the idea that there might not be animals in the water I'm swimming in is because it's polluted that badly. Like, to put in perspective, if Chicago had, if the Chicago triathlon was through the Chicago River, I would never even consider it, because that 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 water is also not nice. <laughs> like I know it's a lot better. I know people do sports in that in that water. Again, other than like kayaking or whatever, I still don't even want. I still even don't even think I want to kayak in that water or canoe, because it's the idea that I could potentially fall in that said water. I know it's a lot cleaner than it used to be, but still. Like, for those who don't know the history of Chicago River, that theoretically, like, 
That is how the Chicago fire, the Chicago fire spread it because that water was so polluted that it just torched like the city. The only parts of the city that wasn't torched was like parts of the city that the Chicago River wasn't really touching like that, AKA the West Side. So like Old Irving Park is one of the few neighborhoods in the city um, on the West Side, Northwest Side, that didn't really get touched as original, um, that still have original homes um, that they restored. Um, but all the other stuff was burned to the ground. <laughs> and a lot of that has to do with the fact that, you know, the river. <laughs> and I know, I think technically some of the stuff up here may not have been touched where I'm at because I don't think the city was all the way incorporated back then. Like it was a much smaller city back then. Um, but I'm not 100% sure how to reread up on the Chicago history, but yeah, just I think swimming in a river that's not a spring fed river, that scares me. Cause I've been in rivers before. I was like, I was actually literally in a river making sure my ankle didn't fall apart in Puerto Rico. Um, on my birthday, I, I was in this place called like this place called the jacuzzi where you literally just chilled in the water. So it's not water, open water, water that scares me. It's polluted open water that would scare me. But anyway, I went on tangent. Let's move on. Okay. And I think I watched tennis too. Um, tennis was, it was a little disappointing for me because Coco, you know, Coco golf, I was definitely, I'm cheering for her all the way and she just did not have the best Olympic um, season for her. Um, she was in three different events and she kind of got um, eliminated. Not quick, quickly, but like, I honestly, this is my theory, bear with me. The way she got eliminated and kind of like mentally defeated in her singles match, I think it carried over with her other events. Um, Cause she was also in the, the doubles, the women's double and the mixed double. And it was kind of like back to back to back, like how she lost. She did pull, pull it together for the, uh, the mixed double, but then the next day or following time that they competed, she kind of, you know, and I, I don't think it's all her. I mean, I understand doubles is like a team sport, but like, um, yeah. Because um, when it comes to the men's double, she's more known. She was a more known individual for the United States that was playing for the tennis. And she is a world rank, like she has a higher ranking than the person who was on that team. Now for the women's, for the women's double, I'm really not sure what happened there because the other person was on that team. She's also highly ranked too. So I'm not sure what happened there because I didn't really watch it because again, the time difference just kind of killed me when it came to a lot of this stuff. Um, I had to go rewatch a lot of it and I still haven't gotten to all of it. And I feel like Olympic season for me, especially summer Olympic season for me is team too much because I want to watch all the sports. I don't even just want to watch like the main known, known sports. I want to watch the women, the, the shooting. Like I want to watch the boxing. Like I want to watch all of it, but it's just too many sports all at once. It's like sports. Like it's just too many. <laughs> anyway. I also watch a little bit of the basketball because um, they also have three on three, but then they also have like the regular basketball. Been watching that too. Um, put in the comments what you've been enjoying, what you've been watching. Um, now I did get to start watching the um, track and field because that started on Thursday. I was on that. That's because, you know, again, that's my favorite. And um, the women's 100 is going to be interesting. Because um, Sharika Jackson, I think she's out. I don't think she's competing anymore. And then, oh, Quincy, uh, I forgot his last name, the 16-year-old that got in um, for the um, relay. The Olympic Committee decided he's too inexperienced to compete on that level. I don't know what that's about, but I don't like it. <laughs> Considering he's 
16 and there was another 16 year old that's competed in the Olympics that is literally the GOAT and kind of is a shoe in for her event. And that is Cindy McLaughlin Laroni. She's been, she was at the Olympics when she was 16. I don't know. I'm kind of, hmm. I didn't do much research to find out what that's about, but I'm kind of just like side-eyeing what that's about because they kind of made that announcement at the very last minute. So it makes me think he even was already in Paris. Like, I don't know. I'm not sure what happened there, but I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. So he's not gonna be there anymore. Um, a couple of other things that happened. One of the rounds for the mix, um, 400 relay, the US set um, a world record. That's a newer event, so we are expecting that to continue to happen for a while because that is a much newer event. But they, they killed that. They almost, they almost got themselves in trouble because um, Shamira Little, who, for those who don't know, who um, was outside of the club about the time the U.S. Olympic trials was over with because she did a double. She competed in the Olympics, the women's, um, women's 400 flat and the women's 400 hurdles. And between both events, she was like outside of it. Um, she was, so they did get her in. Um, she's one of the relay people. So they're trying to compete to figure out who's going to be in the relay final. So I think that's the other reason why they ran it kind of fast because there's only three spots available for the final. Um, because the way the U.S. does it, and I'm sure a lot of countries do it where they interchange the people to get through the heats. And then they can only interchange, I think, one time. Um, so come the finals, they'll have, or twice. So then come the finals, that'll be whoever they end up going with um, at the end. So that's that happened there. Um, and then I watched the 10,000 meter race. And that 10,000 meter race, child, I got stressed out watching that race. That is a race where I was stressed. I was stressed watching it because Grant Fisher killed it, number one. He did kill it. But he had me on stress level a thousand the whole entire time because for the for those who really, really love watching running like I do, definitely check that out. Um, they killed it. They ran up. They were running fast the whole entire time, like super fast, where... Some of the um, competitors actually got sick and had to bow out. Like, and then Woody Kunkade, who's another U.S. runner for that event, he had to like, he, he was way in the back. I think he was one of the people, he was one of the many who were getting lapped. Um, yeah, Grant Fisher showed that he is about that life. He's about that life. Um, he killed it. But what made me so nervous about him, because what, what was happening was they ran an aggressive pace the entire time. Like, so you knew that the Olympic record was going to get broken. It was one of those where you knew the Olympic record was going to get broken because they just were gone, running fast. It was almost world record pace how fast they were running. And... Grant Fisher was with the group the whole entire time, that group but he was on the inside the whole entire time. And then they were doing a lot of, especially right before the time where they, you know, had to make, you had to make a move. They started to slow down a little bit because everyone was taking turns leading. Mainly the Ethiopians were all taking turns leading and which was pretty significant because one of them was a world record holder and the other one was like the, um, Olympic winner of 2021. And then the Ugandan who's been killing it, he, oh, I reversed it. The guy who was, the Ethiopian guy was the um, world championship winner. Whereas the uh, Ugandan that kind of was a little bit outside the box, but he did position himself and he did in the winning, spoiler alert. Um, 
he was the reigning Olympic champion. Um, so, and this was his last race. So this, this was pretty significant. So he was actually one of the favorites to win this event because this is his last time running it before he goes to like doing road racing. Um, Joshua, um, Chica oh, I forgot his name. It's a very common um, African name, last name, at least in the running world. And it's bothering me that I'm not remembering it. But anyway, so he, he does win. Um, but leading up to this, they're just taking turns, the Ethiopians and then, um, Mohammed, um, I think it's like something Mohammed, who's from Canada, he ended up getting up front and then that's when they start, the pace started to slow down. He act, I think he did that on purpose. He's like, I'm slowing this down. This is like team too much. Um, Cause they were, again, they were flying the whole entire time. But this whole entire time while all this is happening, Graham Fisher is stick, staying between like second to like, fifth place the whole entire time. That is his range this whole entire time. But this is his range on the inside. And I'm just like, why is he staying in the inside? I, I get why, because they're, they're running such an aggressive time. So strategically, it makes sense to be on the inside. But he was making me so nervous I was because he was not moving out of there. So about time it was time to make a move. I was like, is he gonna be able to get out of there to make the move? Because also, too, while all this is happening, they're running so fast, they're passing other runners who, they're lapping other runners. So it's, it's, it's chaotic. And so I was afraid that he was going to fall. That's how, because it was getting bunched up quite a few times. And they were getting aggressive. There, there was a lot of this happening. And for the 10,000, that's actually a longer race. And typically, it's more spread out usually. So I'm not used to seeing this as much on the 10,000. The 5,000 the, and the mile, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's almost like borderline contact sport and running at the same time. You're, there's some elbows and all that. So you need to make sure you have room to be able to make a move. Um, but since they're already going a fast pace, I was like, what is happening? But Grant Fisher came through, held his composure, and ended up getting a bronze. And I say it like that because I think he thought he was going to get second place. But there was an Ethiopian guy who snuck up at the last minute and surged and just got him at the line. And it was, man, it was exciting to watch. That was probably one of the most exciting 10,000 meter races to watch in a long time. The way, because the way they're racing it, they're racing it like a mile. That's how they were, it was aggressive. It was an aggressive race. For a, for a mid-distance race on the, in the Olympics, they were, that was aggressive. So aggressive. But Grant Fisher, proud of you. So I'm wondering what, hopefully that didn't kill you when it comes to the 5,000 event. But man, he killed that. So now, we have we, we 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 took home some medal. We took home a medal. Um, the medal count. I think we're still in second place when it comes to medal count. China's number one when it comes to overall medal count. Um, but yeah, that's going on with the Olympics. Okay, last but not least, for those who have been patient enough to stick around. So what's going on with me? So I actually did my um, twenty-six mile bike ride on Monday. Killed that. Did my triathlon that Sunday. And it was what it was. It was not a great triathlon. I think I did a lot better last year. I kind of knew that was going to happen because my swim was not good. Um, the cycling, the part that I thought I could maybe do stuff with, it rained during the triathlon. So I wasn't so confident as far as going fast because I did not want to bite it. Um, for those who watch triathlons, that happens. You can bite it on, on the bike. Um, and I just didn't want a chance biting it and like crashing my bike. <laughs> cause it was slick when it started raining. Um, cause once, especially if you're someone who has like a tri triathlon bike or a road bike and you're doing triathlons, um, that 
and it's like good road. Um, add water to it, like substantial amount of water. That goes from great fast paced cycling to speed skating, speed ice skating. I'm not a good ice skater. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay. So I had to let it up a little bit when it came to that. And then about the time I got to the run and for how long I waited, my ankle was not happy. It wasn't, it wasn't bad, but like it just was swelled from standing for so long and waiting. So the run was all right. I did, as soon as I got to the finish line, I went directly to the first aid kit, um, first to the, um, first aid station and iced it like expeditiously. And everyone was like, are you in pain? I'm like, no, I'm not in pain. It's just, it's swollen. Cause again, I'm having my issue. I still have my ankle issues. Like I could run on it. It's not painful, but like it swells up stuff like all the time now. So it's not okay. <laughs> um, outside of that, I've been getting my runs in. I've been going to the gym twice a week, um, consistently. Um, so I'm happy about that. Been getting my walking in. I've lost some weight. Uh, I feel better. I'm starting to feel better. Starting to get the confidence back. Um, so that's been good. Um, I know I'm saying I'm a lot. Uh, <laughs> the other thing is I did finally go get an MRI. I saw the results. I do need to contact the doctor on Monday to find out what all that means. So long story less long, yeah, my cartilage is bruised there. Besides my cartilage being bruised where my where I did that to my ankle. I have Achilles tendonitis. But the thing is, I've had Achilles tendonitis on this foot on and off since I became a runner. That's been a thing. I've just been managing that. So that Honestly, wasn't as much of a surprise. I was like, okay, yeah, I kind of knew that. Like, you know, um, I just been trying to work around it and do preventive things to make it where it doesn't flare up. But clearly, with everything else is going on right now, it's flared up, um, which doesn't help. Um, and then what else? Uh, I ran ten miles yesterday, and I ran ten miles day before travel on, which is kind of like. What are we doing? But I got to get back on my training. So the two weeks of doing double digits, we're, we're getting there. So I'm trying to slowly get back up when it comes to that. And I've been getting my longer distance cycling in, which also will help with the endurance. So because I can't run on it as much as I feel like I should, I'm trying to work around it where I still keep my endurance up so I can still hopefully do this 50K in the fall. Um, if worse comes to worse, I will drop down distance and do the half marathon because they do have a half marathon distance, but I just don't want to have to do it. <clears throat> I don't want to have to drop down. Um, what else? So the other thing is to, besides the tendonitis, um, the thing to have a little bit of planners, which is a relief. Um, it's not a good thing, but it's a relief as planners because that's, you know, you can work, you can they, I do have a script for physical therapy that I haven't taken advantage of yet. So there's things you could do to work around that and get back to where you need to be. Um, no additional bone issues. Um, something else about degener degenerative something. Like this ankle is just like not a happy camper. But the thing is, I've said this before. Historically, this ankle... This side of my body, my left side of my body has always been the weakest. And this ankle, ever since I became a runner, has been, I've had to do things work around it for years. And I will just continue doing that. You know, as long as some, as long as, um, I'll find out Monday, I'm hoping I can just continue doing that and then add a PT in there. And... That way I could continue running because a girl does not want to stop running. Um, it's, it's my main thing. <laughs> like it's my motivation when it comes to a lot of stuff. So I might have to stop doing like strong distance, long, long distance running. Like I might have to stop doing ultras at some point, but I feel like I got another 10 years in me. Um, 
I, I'll hang it up when it comes a long distance within 10 years. Um, and that does include, hey, if I don't get the 50 states in within 10 years, when it comes to the marathons, I'm not happy about it, but that's also the reason why I said I want to do the 50 states when it comes to half marathons and marathons, because if I don't get that, reach that goal of the marathons, I can at least do it with the halves. Because I can walk 13 miles. I mean, that's kind of how I'm able to do ultras. With ultras, it makes it where you can walk long, long distance or run long distance. Like, it doesn't matter because there's a lot of walking when it comes to the endurance of sports anyway when it comes to that. Um, I'm not sure because also, too, at the end of the day, I'm not getting paid for this. I'm doing this as a hobby, you know, so I'm not the best of the best. I'm not the people that we just got done talking about. I just want to finish at this point. My competing days, I think that window... For a lot of the distances for me is closed. Um, unless I go back to doing smaller races and doing shorter distances. Because I think I honestly could compete when it comes to 10Ks. Because I'm actually naturally built if I don't have the weight on me to do 10Ks. That's been my sweet spot. That's always been my sweet spot. So anyway, we'll see on that. But anyway, I do actually gotta get, gotta get going. <laughs> I'm supposed to be on my way to my run club. But anyway, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye.